Okay, enough of that. <laughs> okay. I don't know what time it is. Anybody, how much time do we have left here? I don't, one more, okay. Any ideas? Going once. What? Let's do 690. Shall we gather at the river? 690. Huh? In the blue book, uh, first, and, first and fourth verse. Shall we gather at the river? Welcome again to Trinity for our worship here, and uh, Pastor Elizabeth has taken her niece for her graduation party to uh, New York City, and uh, so we hope that she has a good time, all of them, and uh, remember them in your prayers as well. Um, <clears throat> most of the announcements, I think all of them, are in the bulletin, so uh, you can read them. Um, where, whenever you feel you have time. So uh, maybe instead of napping during the sermon or something like that, uh, you can read through them. Otherwise, let's stand and we'll begin with our confession and forgiveness on page 94. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captives in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained mercy minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Our opening hymn is 479, We Come to the Hungry Feast. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this peace of the above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in the prayer of the day. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill us this starving world. In your name we pray, amen. You may be seated. The first reading for today is from the book of Isaiah, 
chapter 55, verses 1 through 5. God invites Israel to a great feast at which both food and drink are free. God also promises to make an everlasting covenant with all peoples with promises that previously had been limited to Israel. As David was a witness to the nations, these nations shall now acknowledge the ways in which God has glorified Israel. Listen now to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come and buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the only one of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of the Lord. Let us join together in Psalm 145. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. The Lord upholds all who are falling down and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and give you your food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. Today's second reading comes from Romans chapter 9, verses 1 through 5. This begins a new section in Paul's letter in which he will deal with the place of Israel in God's saving plan. He opens by highlighting how Israel's heritage and legacy include being God's children, having God's covenants, being given God's law, participating in worship of God, and receiving divine promises. Listen now to what the Spirit is saying to the church. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belonging the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel for the 10th Sunday after Pentecost comes from Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. Glory to you, O Lord. After John the Baptist is murdered, Jesus desires a time of solitude. Still, his compassion for others will not allow him to dismiss those who need him. 
and he is moved to perform one of his greatest miracles. Listen now to the good news the Spirit is bringing to the church. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. And he said, Bring them here to me. Oh, they replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. All ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces 12 baskets full, and those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord. You may be seated. And let's begin with the word of prayer. Almighty and gracious God, we give thanks that we can gather as a family of faith that we can join with one another in song and prayer and in worship, and that as we worship, we ask that your presence would satisfy us and fill us as well as we eat your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Throughout the scriptures, you've probably noticed this because you all look pretty smart to me, um, Throughout the scriptures, food is present and important time and time again. And it's not just food, but it also a lot of times the food that people are eating are also metaphors that they rep the food represents God's word. And so that uh, when people eat, they also eat the goodness of God and the satisfaction of God entering into them and being a part of them. And that, uh, that's true from the beginning to the end of the scriptures, from Genesis to Revelation. We have in our gospel text today, it's, it's uh, a great miracle. Uh, or as someone said, uh, the miracle is, is that... Um, People could hear Jesus, that big a crowd, but I think Jesus probably had a big voice, I think, so he probably didn't worry about that too much. But this miracle of feeding the 5,000 occurs in all four Gospels. The only other miracle that occurs in all four Gospels is the resurrection. Otherwise, the Gospels like one story will be here, and it may, you know, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they, uh, they share a lot of the same stories, but not all of them, but they share a lot. But this is the only one that shared Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and occurs in John. And so uh, you can check that out later. It's uh, John 6, chapter 6, I think, is where that, that occurs. The feeding of the 5,000. The disciples try and get out of it. And what's interesting in this, in this uh, story is that the only people who realize or perhaps understand that a miracle has taken place is probably just the disciples because they're the ones that are handling the food and they're the ones that are like, Oh, wow, look at this. We got extra. You sure you've had enough? Here, have another, right? That's uh, People always say that when they're serving. Have some more. There's no calories. 
It's good for you. Have some more. And don't you wonder if the disciples were doing that as they were serving food, the food? Have some more. It's just a little bit of fish. It's good for you, but uh, it's brain food. That's what, um, at my house, when I grew up, that was the story was fish, was brain food. Um, we didn't have enough of it, I don't think, you know, just to say. But the disciples serve the food, and they're also the ones that gather up afterwards, and they're the ones that realize we've got 12 baskets full, which is probably was more than the five loaves and the two fish that they started out with. And of course, probably, probably those 12 baskets, each one perhaps represented one of the 12 tribes of Israel. But in this story, it, it harkens back in the Old Testament to... Um, to when the people of Israel had been brought out of Egypt and they're in the wilderness and they're grumbling because they don't have food and they don't have food they want and they say, oh, remember when we were back in Egypt, how great life was even though back in Egypt they were slaves and they only at one point, Pharaoh reduced their rations by half and worked them twice as hard and they thought in the wilderness, well, it wasn't that bad, was it? And then Moses talks to God, and that, of course, is where the manna and, uh, and the birds come at night to feed the Israelites. And that's what this is supposed to kind of follow, because the people, Jesus, he, he, uh, he, re, he goes back, retreats to a desolate place, because he's dealing with some pretty, pretty heavy news. John the Baptist had been killed. Why? Because John the Baptist was proclaiming the kingdom of God. And here Jesus is proclaiming the kingdom of God. And so he takes a step back, perhaps to pause a little bit, catch his breath, and be ready to strike out again. And the people come to him in the desolate, desolate place and they're looking for food they're looking for the message for the word that Jesus proclaims for the spiritual food that Jesus is feeding them and then they get to the point you know they've been there all day listening and then the disciples say well send them into town so they can find a McDonald's or a Hardee's or some other restaurant where they can get some food. And here we come to the crux of the miracle and the crux of discipleship. Because this is the first time in Matthew's gospel, this is the first time when Jesus says, you know what? You should feed them. You've been following, you know, you can imagine what Jesus is thinking. You've been following me around for a while now, and you've been learning, and you've been, been being fed with spiritual food and all that. So here's time for you to stand up and be counted. You feed them. And the disciples are all befuddled. They, oh, my, we, we only have... Five loaves and two fish. How are we going to do that? And then Jesus takes the five loaves and fish and he prays for it. Hmm. I thought about asking how many people pray for their food and seeing how many hands go up, but I won't ask that in case you don't pray for your food, even though you should. And I like a camp where they pray for the food before they eat, and then after they eat, they give thanks. They pray, pray again. But Jesus prays for the food, and the food somehow satisfies all the people, the men, the women, and the children. It satisfies them because it fills 
not only their stomachs, but his word has filled their hearts as well. Because there is a message to be spoken. Paul begins to speak about it in our Romans text. He kind of is setting things up. It's a, it, we're heading into the end of Romans, and Paul is setting it up, saying that, you know, I'm an Israelite, I'm Jewish, and I, as a Jew, we have received the promise of God. We have received, um, we have received the law. We have received the prophets. We have received all this stuff from God. And he begins after this is to infer that now the Roman Christians have received it as well because they are heirs to the promise. And that is the food that needs to be sent out into the world to feed the hungry, the hungry who are in the wilderness. The wilderness represents in scriptures when people, when the people of God think about it, all the times that people end up in the wilderness in the Bible. The Israelites go to the wilderness. Elijah goes to the wilderness. Elisha goes to the wilderness. The prophets spend time in the wilderness because it's in the wilderness where they're hungry, where not not only physically, but spiritually. It's in the wilderness that God comes to them and feeds them and fills their hearts and souls. That's where God comes because that's where we question. I sometimes, I think um, all of us at some point, whether we have realized it or not, we've probably spent time in our own wildernesses where we're wondering where are the answers where is god where is hope where is where is something that can take this emptiness this this hunger pains that i have in my heart and soul where is something that will fill it up and satisfy it and perhaps we've spend time in our own wildernesses that way. Sometimes I think, and, and um, this is according to one, um, I was listening to a psychologist, and he said, sometimes things are too good. Sometimes things are too good, and if they are, human beings will do something to make things unravel. Because they need that they need to spend time in the wilderness to appreciate what they've got. We as a country, I think sometimes we've had it too well here. Some of the things that concern us as a society in other countries, they don't they don't even consider that because they're trying to survive. They're trying to fill fill their own voids. That that the word of God hasn't, perhaps hasn't reached them. And it's not just Christianity. I mean, when you think of Paul, when he says, you know, we've received the law and we feed, other faiths have similar statutes and commandments as to what we have. Our difference is we're fed by Jesus. And when people are in the wilderness or in that desolate place, when they're starving not only for food or perhaps clothing, but when they're starving for a word of hope and a word of promise, for a word from God that will give their life meaning and a sense of purpose, Jesus says to you, all of you and me, he says, you feed them because that is your job as disciples. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, help us to answer the call when it comes to us, to look for ways that we can feed others your word, your hope, your promise, as well as the food and nourishment that they need as well. 
Be with us in our ministry. Help us to be passionate in our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll sing our next hymn, Lord, whose, humble, whose love in humble service. Let us stand and we'll continue with confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Almighty and gracious God, we pray for this world in which we live, that you made and have made good, that people that live here, all nations, as Isaiah said, that all nations depend on you for food and drink. We ask that you would be with all peoples, Help us to learn to live in peace with one another, to honor one another, and to respect one another. We pray for the war-torn areas of our world, and we ask that peacemakers would rise up in the midst of those conflicts. We think of the Ukraine and Russia, of Niger and its struggles, and of other countries as well, who suffer from violence, suffer from uh, from people treating others as property and not as human beings. We pray for all those who struggle against the, the uh, crime of human, human trafficking, that you would be with those who are 
struggling against that, that you would give, encourage them in their lives and that we would all support them as they do that work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world, the environment that you have given us, all the goodness, the fruits, and the grains that you have given us to eat and to sustain us, that you would be with our farmers as they do their work. We ask for rains to come upon our earth and especially in our area today, and that it would be a good rain. We pray for others as, and for as decisions are made, that they would be made for what is best for all people, and that as we work in our environment, that we, can, we would clean up our messes and help sustain this world that you have given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the ministry of Trinity, that you would be with all of us as we go forth to feed the 5,000 at our, our doorstep, that you would encourage us in our ministry and help us to be able to see when ministry needs to happen before us. We pray for our town, for Spring Grove, for all that is going on, and for all the people who are encouraged and positive about our city. We pray for our school as it begins to prepare to open up this fall, and for all those involved in our school. We pray for all the people that live here, that you would be with us in our lives and help us to thrive as we live with one another. We take time also to pray for particular people in their own need, for Paul Solom, Larry Oftedal, Megan Miller, Jackie Wenis, Carson Betcher, Helen Hermeyer, Lori Vesterse, Terry Rudy Simon, Gloria Robley, Ione Selness, Janet Fossum, Barbara Arnold, Linda Newgard, Pastor Bob Stuskoff, Sharon Hansen, Nadia Wold, Lois Steele, Lisa Ochwat, Linda Tollefsrud, Paul Morkin, Ron and Don Stone, Lori Jensen, Lucas A.J. Wistie, Mary Amundsen, Anna Bingham Uris, Rachel Krensky, Sharon Johnson, Mavis Johnsrud, and Jennifer Wedman. We also pray for our congregations in the Southeast Minnesota Synod and our global Lutheran partners in Colombia, Tanzania, and the South Sudan. We also lift up before you people that we know that have not been mentioned that you would be with them and give them strength and hope at this time as well. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Please share the peace of Christ. Peace the Lord. you, O oh God, maker of all things, through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possession. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, 
Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right in our duty and our joy that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. And after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us join together in the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. You may be seated. 